joining us live. Good to see you, Danielle. And I think I'm now live in the Facebook group. Let's give that a quick minute. Leslie, welcome. Good to see everyone. So I'm so excited to talk about this subject today. Oh, ampersand. Ampersand feels unsure about re reviews himself. Okay. We'll see how this goes. Betty. Good boy. Okay. All right, let's get started. Um, Hannah, welcome. Anna Marie, welcome. My little friend might need to go outside the door. Hold on one second. I will be right back. Instagram, Facebook. Let me know as I bring Ampersand to the door. Please let me know any questions you have about reviews, um, any experiences you want to share about reviews. I would love to know. I'm going to be literally right back, but let me know in the comments your thoughts. Okay, I'm back and we're gonna keep going. So, all right, so I wanted to talk about reviews because there is so much stuff we can put around reviews. Whether you're in a play and the reviews come out and it affects the ticket sales, or you're an audiobook narrator and you're getting weird reviews on Audible and you're wondering if that is going to affect how bookable you are. I know it can get really angsty for some people, which is why I really wanted to talk about it tonight. Um, so I'm so glad you're here. We're going to cover a few things. We're going to share, I'm going to share a little bit about the history of reviews, how to be empowered by reviews, how to learn to let go of them. And I'm going to read some of my worst reviews on Audible <laughs> so everyone knows that everyone gets bad reviews sometimes. And it doesn't mean anything. I want you to start to let go of whatever pressure you're feeling um, about getting a good review or a bad review or a review from this trade publication or a review from that audible listener. Okay, I want to give you some tools to take care of yourself so that if you want to read reviews, you can, but there's absolutely no requirement to read a review ever. The first concept I want to share tonight is that, well, first of all, for folks who are just tuning in on Instagram or on Facebook, I want to say hi. I'm Elise Arsnow, and if you don't know me yet, I'm so glad you're here. I'm a working actor, audiobook narrator, career coach, performance coach. I'm the founder of The Global Actor, where I help actors live where they want and work when they want. One of my favorite ways to do that is through my signature my signature course, The Great Audiobook Adventure, where I help actors build thriving audiobook narration careers to support the rest of their acting life and business. Okay, um, I'm also a producer, a director, uh, a creative, a dog mom, a Virgo. That's all you need to know about me for now. <laughs> okay, so I just wanna say hi to folks who are just joining us, Kiri and Kathy and Michelle, welcome, welcome. Let us know in the comments how you feel about reviews. I'm going to just read a few of the comments that came in just so I know where we're all coming from tonight. Okay. If you are here live on Facebook, let me know if you have any questions. I've definitely got some comments happening in Instagram right now. Uh, Hannah says, oh, <laughs> I love dogs. It's funny how they always seem to want attention the moment we are live. Yes. If you're just joining us, Ampersand made a wonderful entrance <laughs> on tonight's call. All right, let's, okay, let's dive in. So it's important that in this career, we understand what is in our control and we do our best to do our best with what's in our control. And we understand what's out of our control. Okay, so when it comes to reviews, what other people write about us, what other people think about us, is out of our control. I'm gonna say that again because it's really important. What other people think of us, what other people write about us, is out of our control. We can control a lot of things, 
that can influence the way people think about us. But honestly, just the written word that someone writes about us, I want us to remember that literally is out of our control. What is in our control is how we take it, how we take care of ourselves, how we take care of ourselves to put our best work out all the time, how we choose to take in that information or not. And I was listening a little bit earlier today to um, uh, Instagram Live uh, with one of my friends, shout out to Katie Chen Mazzara, and she reminded me of this really great point that we don't get what we want, we get what we believe. So we don't get what we want, we get what we believe. So what does that mean? Why am I bringing that up? We could put a goal out there, but if we don't believe we are actually worthy of that thing, if we don't actually believe that is possible, then it's very likely not gonna happen. We're gonna get what we believe we're worthy of getting. Okay, um, let me know how that sits with people if anybody has thoughts on that, has questions on that. And why I think that's important is when reviews come in, if you get excited about good reviews, I don't want tonight's conversation to stop you from taking that in. Because if that helps you feel good about yourself, great. If it's in support of you feeling good about yourself in order to put your best work out there, then I want you to read that if it makes you feel good. In my, um, in my studio, I have an audio file review of my favorite audio book that I've ever narrated. And I'm, I was so proud of the work. I was proud to get booked for that book. I was proud of the prep work I did. I was proud of the recording I did. I was proud of putting it out into the world. And I was so excited about it. And I was like, you know what? A great review would be a cherry on top. And I got a great review and it was a cherry on top. But that's all it was, was a cherry on top. I've also gotten bad reviews. So I don't choose to give any power to the bad reviews. If, if you're listening to me and thinking, well, why don't you give power to both? Only one of them makes me continue to feel good about myself. And that is in my control. So if I have control of how I'm feeling and I choose to give myself bad thoughts and bad things, things that don't make me feel, I'm, I'm not saying bad, but like things that don't make me feel good about myself, then I'm choosing to not take care of myself. And so I don't wanna encourage anybody to put things into your system that don't make you feel good. I hope that makes sense. So, it, it's got me thinking about if reviews should be a goal that you set, getting good reviews. And I don't know. My answer right now is I don't know. Um, if you followed my Dream Big Plan Smart challenge for this past year, I actually put reviews, good reviews, um, in my goals. And I'm actually questioning that right now because that's not fully in my control and it doesn't mean I'm not doing good work if I don't get good reviews. Um, back when I was in theater, uh, I mean, I do theater, but I haven't since before the pandemic. But I remember uh, when I was in regional theater, community theater, um, people would get superstitious about reviews. And some people would say, I would never, I'll never get, never read my reviews. Um, and that's a choice too, that might make you angsty. Cause then if you do see a review and you don't want that, then you might have a certain feeling around that. I believe in flow. So I, I don't know. I, I think it's good to kind of like take it in if you want to process it and then let it go. Um, and I'm just checking these comments. Rebecca says, believe it in my head. It's not well settled in my heart quite yet. Great, Rebecca. Let me know what that was in response to. Um, Darcy says, I feel like good reviews are icing on the cake because we can't control that aspect necessarily. So they're super yummy to have, but maybe a tough thing to actively pursue. Absolutely, Darcy. And that's, and that's why I keep Again, my favorite review I've ever gotten. I keep that right in front of me because it's a book I'm so proud of and it was really nice that someone acknowledged that as well. Um, 
I was lucky in theater to get a lot of good reviews as well. And I've gotten bad reviews. And at the end of the day, I know I did oh, a good job. At the end of the day, I knew I did my best. So whether it looked like a good job to someone or not, it was what it was. In some cases, um, you will be directed and you might be doing something that is not your choice the way it's coming together. Um, and it's actually the performance is a reflection on the director or the producer or the writer. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Uh, oh, sorry, Facebook. I'm just looking at some comments. Michelle said, I feel that I'm starting to understand that. Great. Um, Ethan says, I don't take reviews very seriously as an actor. As long as I and my director and the audience is satisfied, that's all that really matters to me. I don't take them personally. When I was younger, uh, I think that was, I did. Great. And Michelle said, my goal is just to book jobs. Yes. Yes. Good. I know some people will be happy with my work and others might not like it. So I, I love that, Michelle. And it makes me, it reminds me to share with you um, something I wanted to discuss tonight, which is you can use good reviews to your advantage. Like I said, if it supports you feeling good about yourself and you want to put that somewhere in front of you where you can be reminded of how awesome you are, great. I love that so much. And also, you can use it in your marketing. You can use reviews. I mean, a good review you can use in like a prestigious way. If you have reviews from well-known uh, periodicals, well-known magazines, you can use those reviews and drop them in your website. You could have them in the signature of your email. Um, there's a lot you could you could share them on social media. Lots of things you can do to bolster your reputation. Okay. Um, in a way, reviews are social proof. So I wanted to share a little bit. I just looked up um, the the reason why I'm talking this t about this tonight specifically is an audiobook adventurer reached out to me recently and said, you know what, I'm getting some pretty bad reviews on Audible and I'm worried. I, I feel like I let down the publishers. I feel like I let down the author and I'm afraid they might not call me back. And I assured this person that you're doing just fine. So number one, don't ever base your craft on what you get in reviews. Get a coach's ear, get a director's ear, get the people who actually are in the craft doing the work and can help you improve if you need to, get them to listen, get them to watch your performance rather than taking the thoughts of a random stranger. And I say a random stranger because if we're talking about a platform like Audible, those are super anonymous and oftentimes people only write reviews if they really love something or they really hate something. And again, that doesn't really necessarily have to do with the work that you did. There could be so many reasons that someone, someone could be triggered by the material. You never know. There are lots of reasons someone could write um, a review that is not stellar. Think about it though. Um, I would say there, so why, why are there reviews? Um, social proof. So if we think about um, mm, John Green recently wrote a book all about the five star scale that we've really been using in these online times. And I say online times, um, a little bit of history about online reviews specifically. The first online reviews began to make an appearance. I'm reading this from Shopper Approved, which is like a, a customer um, ratings website. So they say the first online reviews began to make an appearance in 1999. At first, they were largely contained to specific seller websites like eBay, but soon there were uh, three main contenders, ePinions, Rated All, and Deja. They generated a combined 1,146,201 online reviews of various products and entertainment industries. However, they were each eventually taken over or bought out by larger corporations. So remember like audible, those audible reviews are similar to those to eBay reviews. It helps people if they are determined, if they're determining whether they want to buy and listen to a certain book or not. That's all it is. It's not 
it, it, I really want to just encourage people to not base your worth and or your craft on what audible reviewers say. Again, if you get lots of great reviews and you want to use them in your marketing, cool. If it makes you feel good about yourself, great. But the moment it starts feeling, making you feel icky, gunky, I want you to just step away. With that, I want everyone, I'm going to take a moment and read some of my worst reviews because I've had some horrible reviews on Audible and I know every single audiobook narrator out there has received a horrible review before. So I just want to let you know, you're not alone. And I'm at a place where I can laugh when they come in um, because at the end of the day, I'm doing good work. I've booked over 150 audiobooks. I make a living as an actor in my creative work. I'm not concerned. Um, and I'm going to share this, re this review. Um, these reviews that I'm going to share with you are from this ongoing series that I've been narrating um, by Eva Gates. It's called the Lighthouse Library Series. And um, I've worked, I'm actually currently narrating book nine in the series right now. So what that means is I'm still on the book. No one's ever fired me from the book. No one has ever, ever in my audiobook narration career ever brought anything up about reviews. The only time I've ever had a publisher reach out about a review is to like, send a review my way when it was a positive review from Audiophile Magazine. Um, so just, you know, I've never had any decision makers in the audiobook industry ever really bring up reviews except for that. Um, but this series itself, hold on one second, let me just pull it up. The series is called The Lighthouse Library Series by Eva Gates. And this series has taken me, first of all, I started narrating this series as my fifth book, I, yeah, my fifth book I ever narrated back in 2015. And for several years, this series was with Tantor. Then it moved to Blackstone and it introduced me to Blackstone Publishing, uh, which has led to a really great relationship there. And then uh, the last few books have been with Dreamscape. And so this series has introduced me to another set of publishers. All that to say, um, even though I got some crappy reviews in Audible, it still has gotten me consistent jobs with three different publishers. So I had to share that. Um, let me see if I can find this review by book or by crook. Okay. Let's find the juiciness. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. There are a few bad ones, so I want to hear. Okay, here we go. Uh, here's one. Uh, clean. So this is about by Booker by Crook. Clean story with a solid mystery ending. The narration was flat and nasal. Love the cat. That was my two-star review from Audible. Um, thank you, Sharon, from Audible. Um, I wonder if you're an audiobook narrator, Sharon. Uh, okay, the next one said, um, another one, another one from the same book. Good story that kept me trying to figure out who done it till the end, but the narrator was awful. Too bad I narrated eight more books in the series. Dwayne Frankelfield. Um, <laughs> okay, I also had some really awesome um, reviews from the same book, so I just want you to know like it really it just depends on the person who knows why um let me see if i can get another one from this one mm, one second okay another person said such a wonderful story with good characters hope more to come soon library setting is so entertaining so i just wanted to share that was that was a five-star review there were some five-star reviews there were some one-star reviews there was a two-star review and because I'm doing so much self-care works, because I'm doing so much inner work, um, because I've grown so much from my very, from that first narration, I'm able to keep going and this stuff is not getting me down. Um, so I wanted to just share that with you. I'm curious, does anybody have any questions about this topic at all? I would love to answer any questions you might have. Um, Ethan said, 
Oh, Ethan shared a quote. I'm not here to please the critics. I'll take my chances with the public. Ooh, a quote from Walt Disney. Oh, cool, cool, cool. And that's the thing. If, if the book is selling, if you're getting reviews at all, that means people are listening and that's proof that um, they're listening and they wouldn't listen if they couldn't stand it. <laughs> so another thing to keep in mind. All right, that's mainly what I wanted to hear tonight, uh, what I wanted to share with you tonight. Hannah said one thing. I heard once to go to your favorite book slash audiobook and read the worst reviews as a reminder that not everyone is going to love the same things that you do or resonate with the book as you do. Fabulous, Hannah. I love that so much. And in addition to that, I will say, you know, some people are going to love you and some people are not going to love you. And that's got to be, you know, at the end of the day, it's none of our business what other people think. We can't control that person, but we can take care of ourselves. We can work on our craft. We can work on our marketing. We can put ourselves out there and we can continue to take care of ourselves. Um, but again, I want to go back to that quote that I shared earlier. You don't get what you want. You get what you believe. So we need to be feeding ourselves the good things. Um, if you like what I'm putting down about, uh, feeding ourselves with the good things on every Friday night inside the clubhouse global actor lounge. I host a celebration room and we celebrate so that we can really feed ourselves with the good things. What is going well? What are we proud of? And you know, if you do need help getting out of that gunk, we can work on that there as well too. But ultimately it's the celebrating, and what, what are you proud of? Um, at the end of the day, when you're done with your recording session, are you proud of it? And I hope it's always, yes, I did good work. I showed up, I was honest as a storyteller today. And I just told the story. I was those characters. So that's ultimately what I want you to take away from tonight. I'm gonna just review my outline one more time and make sure I covered everything I wanted to. I'm just gonna go through the Facebook comments. Okay, okay, thank you, Facebook. Okay, here's what we're getting in. Yes, oh, Rebecca Stern says, there are also bots. Yes, there are bots that are creating these reviews. Great point, Rebecca. I got an extremely negative review for my massage, my massage business from someone I've never met. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Rebecca, because not, not awesome that that happened, but thanks for sharing that. How could someone give you a review if they've actually never used your service before? Such a good point, Rebecca. Thank you so much. Um, Darcy said, I was going to mention bots as well. Thank you for reminding us of the crazy things that happen on the internet. Darcy said, personally, I plan to collect bad reviews should they happen, and I'm guessing it happens to everyone eventually, and read them on TikTok in the future for fun, but I have a dark sense of humor. <laughs> awesome, Darcy. I like that plan. It may not work for everyone, so if you are very sensitive and you don't want to do that, don't do it. Um, I love this. Jennifer said, I remember Natalie Nottis shared some of her bad reviews on TikTok. Yeah, and like I just did, like, laugh about it because it, it doesn't mean it, it doesn't really mean anything uh, barbara had an audible reviewer say the author should have hired a southern american actor said my accent was fake jokes on them i'm born and raised in the south ha huh. ignored <laughs> awesome barbara yeah if anybody knows barbara she's got a great natural southern accent Amazing. You all are awesome. Thanks so much for sharing tonight. Ethan, yes, other people's opinion of you is none of your business. Always do your very best and be proud. And guess what? When you are consistently showing up, you are consistently being authentically you and riding a high vibe, it gets out there. And the people that are meant to be in your world are attracted to you. You just can't help it. And um, I just, I just want to, I'm cheering all of you on. So let's see, a couple more things and then we will wrap. Leslie says, I recently received a bad review on my first book because my enunciation was too perfect is what they quoted. What? Oh my gosh, Leslie. That's like the best bad review. It's like you're so clear in the way you tell a story. Oh my gosh, that's so crazy, Leslie. Thanks for sharing that. 
Jennifer Celebrate. Yes, our celebration room. Come join Jennifer, Deanna, Dom, and I um, every Friday on Clubhouse, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. That's where we celebrate, and we want you to come. Come celebrate whatever you want to celebrate. If you have good reviews you want to celebrate, come bring them. Uh, Rebecca said, I'll be waiting for something like that. I'm a classic over enunciator, which I'm sure annoys some people. Oh, hilarious. Yes. Darcy, no one is meant to be one size fits all. Your people will find you and it'll be amazing. Love that, Darcy. Awesome. Okay. Thanks everyone so much for joining us tonight. Um, one more time. Let me just run by my outline, make sure I've hit on everything I want to. Okay. I shared a little bit about the history of online reviews, my take on if re reviews are important or not, how to use reviews in your marketing. Yes, I want you to feel empowered to just let them go. Remember, what you're putting into your body, that means the thoughts that are coming in, that means the information you're taking in, that's in your control. There's a percentage of this career that's in our control and there's a percentage of the career that's out of our control. The reviews are out of our control. So really take care of what you can control, which is your craft, which is the way you take care of yourself, the thoughts that you're feeding yourself. So if you have beliefs around this, if you still want to talk about it, send me a direct message and we can coach on this. This is really important work. Inner work is just as important as the craft. It really is. Um, so this is something we talk about. We, we can talk about if you're in the great audiobook adventure on an upcoming call. If you're in Momentum Club, I'd love to chat about it there as well. Um, and just thank you everyone so much for joining us tonight. It was awesome to spend this time with you. Have an incredible week. Um, hold on to those good reviews if you want to and just let the other ones go. You are worth so much more. And if you've never gotten a review in your life, that doesn't mean anything. It really doesn't, okay? You just keep doing you. Remember, there's no one out there with a voice like yours. So it's really, really important that you share it because the way you tell a story is different than any, anybody else out there. So there are people who are really going to connect to what only you have to offer. With that, I say good night and I'll see you again. Thanks so much. I'm going to say bye to Instagram first. Bye, Instagram. And thanks so much for joining me here inside the Global Actors Facebook group. See you next time.